No, would you look at that? Isn't that a lovely wee scene? Down here, Bally Home, we'll just zoom in. They're there, there's somebody's morning there, look. A couple of people out in the boat, just floating by. Whatever those things are over in Larne, who cares? Uh, and look, there's somebody having a wee snooze in their boat. Let me see if we can zoom in on that one. Look at that. Eh? Uh, some people, the haves and have yachts. So, uh, this is me down in Bally Home, like I said. And this is today's episode of Cheese Crisps. So you're all very welcome. Glad to see you again. Thanks very much, everybody, for listening so far into the uh, podcast and sending me and getting involved and sending me in your questions and all that good stuff. Uh, we're here again with uh, Baby Loudon and new Silver Snark. But this morning, where are we? It's hard to see. There it is there. Look at that now, right? Absolutely cracking piece of kit, like I said last week. Uh, something to uh, uh, tune, help you tune your guitars. I don't know what I'm on about this morning. Anyway, we will talk about, we'll go through, uh, today we're going to go through a list of my gigs that are coming up over the weekend. So if you want to come down and see us then, where they're all going to be happening and the times. Uh, I'll talk just general shit to you about what I've been up to. Uh, which includes going down to the old yeah centre in Belfast on Tuesday, I think it was, and having a crack down there. And then, uh, yeah, a couple of questions they ask you about the format of the podcast, whether people would like shorter episodes or what what things you would like included in it. Um, it's, at the end of the day, it's it's part of yours, guys. You know, to to get involved. Uh, we're going to go through some of the good points and the bad points of gigging and then we're going to talk about some questions people have asked one is a, a, a whopper of a question but we'll uh, we'll get to that later so um, yeah big shout out to uh, Owen Big Jerry and the other cultures from Newcastle that were in the bar last night and uh, they were over watching Stereophonics and then came on over for another uh, to keep the night going with yours truly great crack guys I must say uh, and hopefully I'll see you sometime down in Newcastle or more than likely you will come back up and uh, I'll see you then make yourselves known not that you just could hate it right so um, then who else do we have yeah the auction room's up in Moy as well thanks for getting in touch um, unfortunately I couldn't do one of the gigs they were asking me to do over the weekend because I'm so popular I'm booked so uh, yeah this week's gigs are going to be Friday night tonight. Uh, see what I did there? Actually, I'm doing one Thursday night, but you're too late. So that's going to be from 8.30 to 10.30 on the Thursday Goat. Uh, on Friday night, it's going to be 11 to 1 in the Thursday Goat. Saturday, from half three to half five in the Goat. Uh, Friday night, 11 to 1 in the Goat. Uh, s- la, 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 la. Sunday from 5 to half 7 in the Thirsty Goat and then we're going out to Crumlin to the Fiddler's Inn uh, from 9 to half 11 yeah now they call me Beautiful Kev up there okay but somebody got mixed up and you can see why you know what I mean they call me Beautiful Kev but uh, somebody got it mixed up or somebody was bullshitting on our mates the other week and told them that I was known as Sexy Simon so he was sexy Simon this and sexy Simon that. I thought he was just blocked, <laughs> which, which he was, but he didn't realise my name wasn't Kevin, although I certainly am. He didn't realise my name was Kevin and not Simon, although I certainly am sexy and beautiful. So, uh, yes, get to one of the gigs, come up, make yourself known, ask for requests, even if they're shite. If I don't know them, I can't do them. Don't tell me to look at the wee screen. I don't know them, I don't know them. I'm not I'm not God Almighty, right? Um, so other things then that I've been doing this week was number one, got the uh, bap chapped and the the face cut and combed uh, by Sean down the Cambridge Barbers. Uh, always does a job on the Lisburn Road and there's one down uh, in Strammellis as well. So if you're a student out there, get down and, and get stuck in there. Uh, always does a great job, always great crack in the in the barber's show. Um, what else was going to say? Yes, the reason I did it was, well, number one, I looked like I was living in a, in the woods. Uh, Ma Bartlett told me on Wednesday 
that I looked 50. No, sorry, on Thursday. No, Wednesday. Fuck up. She told me that I looked 50 years old because of my beard. And then when I was sitting in the barber, she phoned me and goes, make sure he cuts that wee bit under your lip because you look 60. I was like, fuck me, I'm aging by the day. So, good job that I got it done. And, or sooner or later, I feel like it was going to be in my box. Under the ground. So, at least now I look 27. Uh, right, during the week then, went down to the Oh Yes Centre in Belfast, which is a music centre in Gordon Street. Uh, I've known about it, it's been open for like 12 years, I've known about it, and it is... Uh, in association with, if not run by, I'm not sure the whole backstory of the place, but it is run by or associated with Gary Lightbody from Snow Patrol. So you have, uh, he would get involved in a lot of stuff. I did see him one day outside the Duke of York, and there was a fool, he was just around for a pint on his own, and there was a fool uh, bet going on that I wouldn't go over, sit down on the seat beside him, swing my legs around, lay back on his legs, and go. If I lay here, I think we'd got the kitty up to £75. And I was like, nah. And I was going over to do it. And then somebody, two other people, two super fans, sat down beside him. And somebody was like, dude, go and lie on the ground in front of him. I'm like, fuck off, it's not happening. All right. So that's how that one ended. But anyway, the Oh Yes Centre. Um, the other week, as I was describing to you, uh, I watched the film. I'd been looking to do something about Belfast music and there's some great great songs that i've even just i've heard of but i've listened to properly again now that i'm a bit older and i really i really do appreciate them so the likes of the undertones the likes of bob kennedy uh there's foy vance there's gareth dunlop all those guys out that are doing music now but some of the older stuff um the stuff like now there's bands that people would have played with like henry mcculloch uh, would have played with Wings and things like that Rory Gallagher all those things but all the music that is associated with Van Morrison all the stuff around Belfast during the, the 60s and the 70s um, is unreal is unreal and even into the 80s so and you had all the different genres and like punk rock uh, blues jazz everything and the Oh Yes Centre I, I watched the film I'm going to jump around here right I watched a film the other night that I didn't know existed called Good Vibrations and it was to it was basically the, the life story um, of a guy called Terry Hooley from uh, Belfast who opened up his record shop during the Troubles um, and supported Local X and was the guy who was responsible for paying for recording the undertones teenage kicks and it went massive so i watched the film it was great for some i think it comes from a stage show so it it uh was a wee bit slightly different to maybe a normal film you could tell there was there was stage stuff in it but i found it really interesting and it gave me a wee spark now i remembered then in the oh yes center i read in the paper uh a couple of months ago that the oh yes center had some memorabilia from that time things that included uh, like the jackets, the guitars, the records, the backstage passes, you name it, they had it off the likes of the, the Undertones, Rudy, Outcast, Gary Moore, uh, Don, uh, sorry, David McWilliams, um, and Snow Patrol, and loads of other stuff, and then the loads of panels up as well, describing what these guys did, and it goes right back to um, the show bands as well so uh, people like George Jones and involved in it and then some of the big names like the Royal and the Maritime Hotel where Van Morrison and them would have played class to get involved in it right I'm going to show you some footage here as I'm talking as well of some of the things one of the things that really stuck me was there's a there was a guy called David McWilliams who wrote the song uh, The Days of Party Spencer that was later covered by Mark Almond and his guitar is there his acoustic guitar has been donated to it and the bit that got me was the top of the strings right just as a musician i'm hoping that's going to zoom in or focus um so just as a musician these are the things that people don't really see 
or they don't pay attention to. I never really did until I saw that, and I went, those strings were put on by him. You know, no, no two ways about it. And you were like, that's that. He's the last person they've played that, or you know, like he put those strings on. Don't ask me why, but it it, it hit me. So there is definitely stuff to go down and see. It was amazing. It was a really relaxing day. Went down, had a wee cup of coffee, or sorry, cup of tea, Earl Grey, if you know me well, and then went round. And Stephen at the desk couldn't have been more helpful. Couldn't have been nicer. He's actually organising uh, a music tour of. Uh, Belfast so I think it's on Saturdays he said so get on to that if you're interested um, they'll take you around the minibus and show you the different sites and things where uh, the different music happened even even panels like uh, Jimmy Kennedy who I'd never heard of had written things like he was from our was he born in Armagh but grew up in Port Stewart um, written the Hokey Cokey Teddy Bear's Picnic Plus then songs for Frank Sinatra, Gene Autry, you name it. He had written the songs for these guys. Bing Crosby, them all. So, um, really fascinating and fascinating to think that all that started in our wee, uh, in our wee county and roundabout. So, uh, definitely the the thing, the one of the other cool things was they had the the original sign for the Good Vibrations shop which was like an Elvis figure standing with good vibrations under it. Can't believe it still exists. So all those things, absolutely class. Gary Moore's suit with a barbed wire on it, like stitched into it. Cool as fuck, right? Um, and then there's, but there's pictures as well for being, being from having gigged for so long. Uh, like a picture of uh, three guys that were standing up, getting their set list taken, or getting their set list written down. And somebody took a photograph of it, reminded me of when we were in England and playing as the Sons of Ushna with Mickey and Decky. And there's uh, Rainbow had taken a photograph of us when we were, what, 19 or 20. Uh, totally out of our depth about to do our first gig and stand up and writing our first uh, set list. And it was, it was the exact same, the similarities were there anyway. Um, so, cracking, cracking thing to get involved in. Um, and if you're looking for a nice easy morning, get yourself down to the OES Centre. If you have any stories about the older music or just stuff in the past or things that are happening now, give me a shout and we can talk about them and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Now, so that was cracking. Now, a couple of other questions for you to do with the podcast. Would you like shorter episodes? I noticed then from YouTube that... Uh, there's an average of like 8 to 12 minutes of what people will listen to at one time if you would like a shorter like if you would like it just to be 8 or 12 minutes per episode let me know I can see that or if, you, if you're happy enough that they're maybe like between 30 minutes and 45 minutes then happy days the interviews do go on a wee bit longer because you can you can bounce off people so that's one of those things if as well you would like to subscribe to the YouTube channel click on the wee button down there or is it there I can't remember get on the one on and click it and subscribe and you, you've got a chance to win something me right uh, so then some of the best gigs then that I have been involved in you get gigs that come out of the blue and there could be the gigs that you've been doing week in week out or there could be a wee special gig like this one I'm going to talk about so uh, when, when I was down in the OES Centre, you saw the names of uh, past champions like the Horselips and uh, Bob Kennedy and uh, Gary Moore, things like that, right? But they actually say that you were on the list or at a gig that Horselips and Bob Kennedy played at with Garth Dunlop. Um, it was brilliant. We got invited up uh, to play it up on the north coast beside Dunwich Castle. I, if I can, I will put up a wee photograph from the backstage looking out. You could see Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland in Donegal. You could see Dunluce Castle and then you could see Scotland. Some was split in the trees. Mum and Dad and all came up. And uh, loads of friends and that came up. And it was a cracking, cracking opportunity. We sat out the back really and at the chocolate strawberries that were dipped for horse lips. 
and uh, made pigs of herself. So, but doing things like that were fascinating and, and class to do. So I would love to be able to get back to doing gigs like that. And it will happen. It will happen. Uh, so some good points uh, from doing gigs. There was a group of girls. It, was it after the lockdown? I think it was. I think they were from Kerry. And they were in. And they were loving the, the tunes. And they sent me up. Now, don't ask me where they got this. Somebody had a heart-shaped uh, post-it note. And they wrote on it, loving the tunes, especially your own songs. Uh, keep it going. And then I think they signed it at the back, the girls from Kerry. And they slipped in a wee tip as well there as well. So, uh, for a pint after. Um, so that was great. Wee things like that make you feel like... I know people are enjoying it because they're clapping and stuff like that. But just it, it went a wee bit above and beyond and it was it made you feel great made me feel great uh and then other people saying that you've made their night or they've had a bad week or you know they haven't been out in ages and they had a great time that means the 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 world to me uh when people are saying that and that's what we're here that's what i'm here to do that's part of what i think i'm here to do is the you know other people are, are out there slaving away in offices and stuff and i'm lucky enough to get to play music uh and do what I love, and maybe on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, then they come down, they let their hair down, and we try to give them a, a good show. So if you have those things and you want to talk to us, come up and talk to us. We, we won't bite your head off, right? Uh, bad, bad points about gigging. You will get people who go too far on the old sauce, and they might have one or six extra drinks, and they might fall into your gear and try to break your teeth with your own microphone. Um, Obviously, they don't mean to. Uh, they're just they're just overindulgent. So, and we've all done that. Um, there was one that has always stuck out my head. I'd gone into a bar, I'll tell you where it was, and uh, gone into the bar, and I was just doing a mic check, uh, like the cheese crisps. That's that's a mic check, by the way. Just in case I haven't mentioned it. So cheese crisps, it gets all those wee words out and uh, helps you to set the levels properly. Um, and then you go one two one two one two right we've all heard it everybody does it and this <laughs> literally had went and gone one two one two one two and strummed the guitar and this one goes i didn't come down here to listen to you practice for fuck's sake <laughs> it's like uh, give over in three minutes you're going to be up dancing and there she was up falling over herself god help her mental um so some other things, some of your other questions then. Uh, somebody texted me in and asked me what my favourite soup was. Who knows? Who knows? I know. My favourite soup has to be Heinz tomato soup. Uh, with uh, some sort of bread. Probably a good bit. Uh, the heel of a uh, crusty, nutty crust. Um, or some other crusty bread with a bit of butter on it. Um, I was always against butter, butter in your, your soup bread, but it's it's great. Try it. So that would be my, my favourite soup. Uh, my best pick, the best pick to use now, when I got this, I use, where is it? I use a Dunlop pick again. Not sponsored unless you want to sponsor me. I use one of these bad boys here and there's a natural uh, an unnatural bend on it um let me see if we can get that to zoom in if i maybe hold it in front of my eye there you go so as you can see it's part bitten it's part bent that's whatever you're going like that trying to mm. tune the guitar and it goes into your gob uh it's a it's a if i move it there again you might see it it is a there it is nope it has to zoom in there it's a, a 1.0 millimeter. Some people think it's like playing with a, a credit card. And I'm gonna try and hold it still there. There's actually a grip on it. It's a maxi grip, they call it, because my fing wee finger and thumb will sweat a lot because I'm putting so much into the gig. And the wee bend on it, I learned from my friend, Mickey Fenton, who always done that with his picks. And I, it was just something I picked, I picked up from. <laughs> so, there's there's that I can't play with it especially when you're out gigging uh, in a loud bar 
you need something that's going to give you the volume and you get that with the thicker picks if you're using like an electric guitar they tend to play with uh, like point, point four four. be like playing with an angel's tear and uh, then other people play with the thumb picks uh, some people do a thing called hybrid picking where they're 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 picking with that with the the pick guitar pick and then picking other strings with their fingers and thumbs this guy can't do that so i went into matchets this morning in belfast my favorite music shop uh really the only music shop worth worth its juice uh the guys in it are a hundred percent i have got lots of stuff from them mixing desks strings all that stuff microphones microphone stands cajon you name it they have it and if they don't have it it's not worth having i asked did they have any of my fucking fly yeah i asked did they have any of my normal picks but they didn't have those in but they had these ones these are max grip uh max grip they're car they're saying they're carbon fiber they're for the shit they're not uh for like what 5.99 for a pack of a 10 or something um but these are like the small version let me see how thick they are the might might tell you no it just says jazz three so they're quite there's no bend on them really so and they're very small but i suppose geez i don't think i could play with that i bought them just to see nah jesus wept it's like look at all the size of it you know what i mean um that on a friday and saturday night i would break my fingernail off but then i also bought these couple of ones uh these are horn so it must be like a deer horn or something now look at the thickness of that yoke there and there's a wee divot in it as well you can see that is that zooming in there yeah cool um to give you the extra grip for your thumb now i did have that out of the packet so there's the difference there when you're holding it Definitely. I'm gonna try it tonight. Definitely reckon you could get away with that. No bother. But again, it's 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 down to your personal preference. I know Army would play with um, a 0.77, I think he said, or a 0.88, something like that. Um, they're too light for me. I definitely need something with a bit more. Uh, you can get these handmade, like where the guy shaves them and all on YouTube or YouTube on wherever he's fucking selling them on eBay or something and he does all that so you can get those but that actually feels because you can actually get a wee bit more control a wee bit more precision on what you're picking so it's pretty decent there um, so I do like that one so I will let you know how I get on with that if you have any other favourite picks that I don't know about, let me know and we'll see how we get on. Uh, I'll try and get them and tell you what I think and I will tell you if they're shit. So, um, then somebody else texts me in and asks for my favourite local music musicians. I've loads of them, right? Generally speaking, see anybody that has the balls to get up in front of a crowd of Belfast people and give it race. They're, they've got balls of steel, haven't they? Um, so, uh, be aware that everybody might not be your cup of tea, all right, and that's fine. Um, but give them the give them a round of applause and encourage them, and because uh, other people might be enjoying it. And it just when you get the encouragement, you give a hundred and ten, like you really go you go above and beyond then, and you're able to put a wee bit more in it. So um, the bit, don't do this. Don't ask for a song like somebody did once before, and went. Could you play Songbird? And I went, yep, no problem. By Fleetwood Mac, yes, no problem. I love that song. No problem, I'll do it for you now. I started to play it, and I was like having fucking Simon Cowell, right, in a dress. And she goes, I hadn't even finished the first line of the lyrics, and she goes, mm, it's all right, but no. I'm like, <laughs> I want to stop playing your song right now. You know, so give people a wee bit of encouragement, especially if it's songs that, like are so fucking left field 
that nobody plays them and then somebody goes to do it for you. Try to be nice, right? So um, we've got through plenty of stuff today. Like I said, if there's anything that you would like me to uh, do with the podcast, let me know. Um, if there are any requests that you would like to hear the gig, let me know and we'll see what the crack is. Um, some of the other things then uh, that I, yes, last weekend I played with Army was away on uh, his holidays, so he's back this week, but we had, stepping in for him, we had Patrick Silver, there's my G's everywhere, Patty. Uh, the Patrick Silver on the drums came in and absolutely killed it. Uh, how did we meet Patty? He came in one night, he was in the bar when we, me and Connor were playing out the back, and he had a few jars in him, God help him, and, but he was dead on, he was 100%, and he came up and he said, lend us your tambourine, and I was like, fuck no, you're not getting it, and he goes, no, go on, go on, I go, no, no, you're not getting it, just leave it alone, and he goes, it's what I do, and I went, well, play the tambourine, he goes, no, I'm a drummer, and I went, right, there was something there, there was something about him that I went, he's not talking shit, and I went, look, sit on the back of that speaker, there's the tambourine, if I tell you to stop, just stop and go, right? And by the end of the song, I was looking at the tambourine going, why don't you fucking sound like that when I play it, right? He was phenomenal, even on the, just on the tambourine. So we met up, we had a jam, and since then, uh, whenever we need a drummer, Paddy's there and available, and he's, he's a legend. So um, you can find him at Trex Studio in Dunmurray. And if you want to do any recording and stuff like that, give him a shout and he'll he'll fit you in. Um, so, what else do I need to talk about today? I think that's it, really. Um, so, I am going to finish today's episode with a cover song uh, that will be dedicated to Jerry down in the Thirsty Goat, who works his arse off down there, as the rest of them do. But he did say to me the other night that he loved this song. He was listening to it on the way home from a, a tough shift or a, a long shift. And he said that he still thinks that my version is the better, the best one of the version, the cover versions that he's heard. So uh, this one's the Jerish. Uh, don't know why I called you that. All right, but hope you enjoyed. This is Tennessee Whiskey by Chris Dippen, who wrote it, as far as I know. So. Used to spend my nights out in the barroom. Liquor was the only love I'd ever know But you rescued me from reaching for the bottle Brought me back from being too far gone You're as smooth is Tennessee whiskey Your is sweet Is strawberry wine Your is warm As a glass of brandy and Honey, I'd stay stone On your love all the time I looked for love in all the same old places Found the bottom of the bottle always dry But when you poured out your heart I didn't waste it Cause there is nothing like your love Get me high You're as smooth As Tennessee whiskey You're as sweet Strawberry wine You're as warm As a glass of brandy Honey, I'd stay stone 
on your love all the time There's a short, short version of it anyway. Hope you liked it. Like I said, guys, you know what I'm asking you for. Hit subscribe if you want. Uh, get involved with your questions. Fire them in. Any requests or songs, whatever. Give me a shout and we will head the crack. Hopefully next week we will be back on to having uh, one of our local acts in. Uh, I'm not telling you the name now. You just have to wait. I might put it out uh, closer to the time. Uh, and we'll do another wee interview, but it might be in the, the van and we'll go somewhere nice. Okay, so uh, we will see you all next week. Take it easy, and again, thanks for tuning in. All right, all the best. Bye bye. I'll leave you with this.